Hello, I am Jennifer Lynn Bursell, aka Ever Tuning Butterfly, bringing to you a living with an invisible learning challenge where we will discuss the challenges and triumphs of those with NLD. I don't know if you're a new listener or not, but I would like to share with you where I get most of my articles for this podcast. I've recently learned about a nonprofit that I would really like to help. It's the NVLD Project. In addition to doing research on NVLD, and working to get it back on the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, that is the DSM, they provide support groups for those with NVLD. You can find the NVLD project at www.nvld.org. All proceeds from this podcast and the ads will go towards the NVLD project. I will include the link for this in the description of the podcast. Please go to livingwithnld.com to learn more about my podcast. Also, I would like to announce that I now have created a YouTube channel for this podcast. I will post the link for this in the description for you. Hi, I would like to thank the NVLD project for helping me spread the word about my small, safe Zoom group on the third Saturday of the month. The Next one is on the 20th of March. You can find the link by going to Facebook to Living with NLD or email me for the link or the NVLD project. And if you do plan on coming, please uh, say that you are coming to the event that is on the Facebook page for Living with NLD. And I Hope to see you there at that event. The last one that happened was the biggest one yet. Seven people came, and I think it went quite well. So hope to see you there. Bye. Hi. Today we are going to talk about authenticity versus masking or hiding NLD. I want to thank my mom for inspiring me to write this topic. She gave me the idea for it in one of her uh, lessons that she did recently. So for many of us with NLD, we wear a mask because we may not be comfortable with showing our true selves when we're out in the world. Or maybe we are comfortable with being our true selves, but we don't know how to show it because the world doesn't fully understand, excuse my French, what the hell NLD is. And I try to help the world, at least I have tried to help the world since I've created the podcast with having a better understanding of NLD. And I am also discovering more about myself each day since I've created the podcast. And a little sidebar, if you hear me stumble with the script today, that's because I'm dealing with one of my bad migraines, so sorry about that. Uh, So, where was I? Oh, yes. So, today's podcast is about authenticity and masking, or hiding NLD. So, the article that I picked is titled, Authenticity, Are You Comfortable in Your Own Skin? by Venus Keem. She is, quote, a business faculty member at Central Community College in Grand Island, Nebraska. She also serves as the promotional strategist for the Global Leadership Summit and marketing lead for the Third City Christian Church Annual Women's Retreat. She is currently a leadership coach in training with Who Are You Coaching, end quote. Her article is about when she lost her altogether mask, as she calls it, or when it came off. So, quote, for many of us, each morning we get up and go to our closets to pick out our, outfit, our outfit. 
outfit for the day. For example, that includes the perfect shoes, the belt, and perhaps just the right jacket to tie it all together. For example, uh, sorry, for me, there was one accessory I would not leave the house without, my trusty mask. You know, the I've got it all together mask, end quote. Sorry for the stumbling. It's, whenever I have a bad migraine, it's a little hard to read the script. So I can relate to what Venus was saying in this article because I have felt like I had it all together when I was trying to apply to college. And then I realized I would need help with the essays. After all, I knew writing was a real challenge for me. So I let my mom help me. I also decided to let my mom and other and many others help me graduate from college, even though I used to think needing help was a sign of weakness. I realized that was not true. It's a sign of strength to realize that you need help and to ask for it. I think the only time I try to limit how much I share about myself is when I'm dating or making new relationships with NTs. NTs stand for neurotypicals. Sorry, neurotypicals. Because I'm not sure how they will react to NLD, the sexual abuse or other private things I may want to share with them that I don't want to tell the, I don't want them to tell anyone else without my permission. I would also like to share an excerpt from an article titled Leading, Leaning into my vulnerability with NBLD written by Megan, who is a quote, a graduate of child and youth worker program from Caribbean College and pursuing degree with disability studies at Ryan University along with a certificate in Aboriginal knowledge and experiences and a project ambassador for the MVLD project, end quote. Quote, I was bullied for being different, and I was continually struggling to find my place in the world. Being vulnerable means being exposed to various experiences that can instill a sense of trauma. Growing up with a label attached to your name creates a series of unfortunate events, as I call them. I was naive and trusted people far too easily. I wore my heart on my sleeve, which often left me brokenhearted, and I was a giver to those who didn't deserve my worth, end quote. That was an excerpt from Megan's article. I can relate to Megan because I was also bullied growing up, as I shared with you in the Being Made Fun of episode. I also experienced something similar to what Megan did when I was in college from two of my friendships that were quite one-sided. I didn't really find out about this fact until I was wanting to have one of my friends over for my birthday in my senior year, and he didn't feel comfortable coming over because of him being queer, questioning his sexuality. And my brother is straight. Sorry, and my brother being straight. I didn't understand his feelings because my brother is an ally of LBGDQA plus people. So I decided to stop being friends with him because he was frequently late to our meetups or didn't come to them at all. And quite frankly, family comes first. I didn't like how he was treating my brother. The other friend that I lost connection with in college was a girl that I met in one of my math classes. We became good friends and 
I found out that she lived close to my parents' home. But when we both got back to college the next semester, I tried to hang out with her in our senior years, or maybe it was junior years. It's a little tricky for me to remember. She never could hang out because she was too busy with some club she was part of. Eventually, I gave up communication with her and decided to concentrate on finding friends that would care more about me and put the equal time that I put into the relationship. I did find friends that did this for me. One of those girls I met in an environmental club that I was part of in my freshman year and kept in touch with her because we got along. We also lived close to each other. We did many fun things together, like getting dinner and playing cards with my friends and apartment mate. My apartment mate's name is Kat and my friend's name is Naomi. The other girl I met in environmental class in my junior year of college, and we also got along really well. So we got dinner together frequently. We would also study together for the class we took together. Her name is Laurel. And I still keep in touch with those two girls today. I look forward to when COVID is over so I can see these girls in person again because I miss them. I also have two good close friends, Janine and Natalie, that I keep in touch with over FaceTime. They have supported me with many things in my life, including NLD and my sexual abuse. I met Adelie when I was in Girl Scouts, and no, she was not one of the girls that made fun of me. We lived close to each other, so it was easy for us to hang out. But once I quit Girl Scouts, we stopped hanging out. But we reconnected when we both started college, and she was attending my mom's church in the summertime. She went to a different college than I did, but we kept in touch by FaceTime maybe once a month while we were in college because we wanted to support each other and stay friends. We were both out of college, sorry, now we are both out of college and have jobs. We FaceTime on the weekends. I met Janine in 2019 when she started attending my mom's church she was volunteering at church. Um, she decided to hang out. We, we decided to hang outside of the church and found out that we had a lot in common. It was weird because we both had gone to UC Berkeley and Summer Bridge at different times. We worked with children who had autism. It, who have autism or Down syndrome, and we were both homeschooled before attending college. Now we both work and FaceTime on the weekends. It is funny how much Janine and I, Janine and I have in common. It makes my world seem smaller at times. I also met my friend Jeff at my mom's church when we were in Sunday school together. We became close friends when he started to tutor me for all my math classes. We also would attend Youth of Unity events together. He is three years older than me, so he was ahead of me in the programs, but that wasn't an issue. He is like a second brother to me because he has supported me with my sexual abuse, trauma, and VLD, chronic migraines, and been my math tutor for many years. I sc still keep in touch with him today. I do also have another friend named Christian, who is our videographer at my mom's church. We started talking more once my mom started doing virtual services from the sanctuary at her church. He didn't know I had NLD when we started talking, but he does 
know now because I told him once I created a podcast for my mom's church. We have become good friends because he lets me be vulnerable about my NLD, which is what true friends do. I can't wait for COVID to end so I can get back to having my social life. It's not that I don't have a social life now. It's just not what my, not what I was used to, I will say. I miss seeing my friends in person and hugging them. I mean, whenever I FaceTime with them, it's like, I want to hug you and I can't do that. I don't like COVID. Um, I'm telling you about my friends because I want to give you examples of people that let you be authentic and vulnerable and supported. Also ones that don't support it. This is true because I've had both. A song that illustrates someone wanting to be more authentic is Reflection by Leah Salonga. Sorry if I said that last name incorrectly. From the Disney movie Mulan. I will put the name of that song in the podcast description for you. I hope that there are other NLDers or people who have NLD out there like me that have good, true friends. I also have been creating good friendships with people who have NLD online since I created this podcast. It has been fun getting to know fellow NLD, people who have NLD or NLDers because we can relate on many things um, that you have in common because of having NLD. We also get to have empathy with each other because of all of the challenges that come with having NLD. And so I would like to say that if you are, are authentic and vulnerable, you may still occasionally mask your NLD like me and many others who have it and I still struggle with it today. Thank you for listening today. And as I wrap up, I would like to hear from you, my audience, um, about the times that you have been vulnerable or authentic. Please comment on the episode on livingwithnld.com or email me at livingwithnld at gmail.com with your answer to the question. You can also leave a comment on YouTube with the answer to the question. I'll leave links to all the places in the podcast description for your reference. And in conclusion, I always am interested in hearing from my audience because I do like to have feedback from you guys and see what you think about the podcast. So please feel free to email me about it or comment on the website. Thank you for listening today. And I hope you learned something new. Talk to you next Friday. Bye. As I wrap up, there are some things I would like to share with you. I do have a website for this podcast. It is called livingwithnld.com. I also have a Facebook and Instagram page for this podcast. It is called Living with NLD. I will include the links for those in the description. In conclusion, I would like to hear from my audience. If you know individuals with NLD that I could interview for this podcast, please email me at livingwithnld at gmail.com. What are you interested in learning about NLD? I know I'm not an expert, but I do know I have the living experience of having it. I would like you to practice journaling about your gifts and differences. Also see if there is a way that you can make that difference become easier for you to do than it originally was. Thank you for listening today, and please go to my YouTube channel and subscribe to it. Thank you. Bye.